Hi everyone, Southany Park Tano here, the internet's busiest South Park nerd, and it is time for a review of every original South Park song ever. <sighs> okay, let's do this. You know how this goes by now, so I'll try to keep the intro brief. South Park has a lot of original music, like, a lot. Matt and Trey are legitimately talented musicians, and they even proved this when they created their Broadway musical that would go on to win nine Tony Awards. Because of their clear passion for music, it's no surprise that there is plenty of music in South Park. Fortunately for me, last year the South Park social media pages created a tournament bracket of 64 songs that fans could vote on, so I started by including all of those songs and then added ones that were left off. If I included every single moment of song from the show, the list would be full of 10 second long snippets and that would just be boring, so I tried to narrow it down to the songs that felt more substantial. By doing this, I inevitably left off some musical numbers that are probably your favorite in the entire show, so feel free to rant about it in the comments section. I will be taking into account only original tracks, so covers of existing songs will not be counted because if that were the case, we all know what would take the first spot. I also excluded the live performances from the 25th anniversary concert or the orchestral rendition since those are just live covers of the songs from the show. I will also not be including any AI covers despite how beautiful some of those are. I got my red dress on tonight, dancing in the dark in the pale moonlight. I did make sure to include the songs from South Park Bigger, Longer, and Uncut because for some reason the tournament did not include those, but the movie is literally a musical and it would be a huge disservice to leave it off the list. Through these methods, I was able to narrow it down to an even 100 songs to be ranked. I will be ranking them from worst to best, and they will be organized in a tier list fashion going from C to S tier. There is no D tier in this one because there really weren't any songs that I consider to be bad. The songs will be ranked by my personal enjoyment of them, whether my enjoyment comes from the quality of the music, the comedy within it, or a combination of the two. If I enjoy the song more, it gets placed higher up. With that being said, it was incredibly difficult to rank these songs. They're all entertaining, and realistically, each of their placements could be moved up or down like 15 spots because of how narrow of a gap there is in quality. So really, their placements aren't all that significant, especially in the mid-tiers, so don't get too upset if the rankings seem inconsistent. All of these songs are pretty great, and the real purpose of this video is for me to talk about one of my favorite parts of South Park. Also, go check out my last video. It's about zombie parasites, and it's super interesting, and it would mean a lot. I know it's not South Park, but trust me, it's really good. So, with the intro out of the way, and a long musical journey ahead, let's get into it. This is every South Park original song ranked from worst to best. So you probably didn't expect this, but I got something really cool to show you. This is my incredible Princess Kenny poster from today's sponsor, Displate. Displate has a ton of super cool metal posters, including a bunch of South Park ones, for example. Check that bad boy out. They are super high quality and they look absolutely incredible. A lot of you may not know I was addicted to Elden Ring for a while, so I got this super cool Godfrey poster. The details are just incredible, and I will definitely be hanging this one up. They also sent me the super cool Rocket League one because as you all know, I am a pro Rocket League gamer. These things are ridiculously easy to hang up. You don't need any sort of tax or anything going into the wall. Literally all you need is a sticker and a magnet. It is so easy that I will show you how to do it right now. All right, so now that that's on, take the poster and bam, just. You can also adjust it so you don't have to worry about it being at the perfect height or the perfect level. And let's say I get bored of this one, I don't like it anymore. I just pop it off and then pop the other one on just like that. So if you go to my shop, which will be linked in the description, I have curated a ton of my favorite South Park displays. There are so many cool ones on here and I just collected some of my favorites. And if you're gonna buy them, make sure to use code BLOOMS at checkout as it'll give you 20% off if you're buying one or two of them and 30% off for three or more. That is code BLOOMS to get 20 to 30% off of your order. Not only can you get a sick poster, but you'll also be helping support the channel and I would appreciate it. So don't wait, go use code BLOOMS and get an epic poster from Display. And thank you to Display for sponsoring this video. So we start with the C tier, and this tier is mostly songs that are not quite up to par with what is expected of South Park music. Again, they're not bad by any means, they just don't hold the same weight as all the others. 
we'll start with the goth anthem burn down hot topic I'm gonna be honest, I didn't even know that this song existed, despite the fact that I've watched this episode multiple times. It plays at the end of The Ungroundable when the goth kids are, well, burning down Hot Topic. They're doing this to try to stop the vamp kids, but the song itself is more of just a background track. It's pretty forgettable. Nothing particularly funny or interesting about it. The dark and brooding music style makes sense in the context of the episode, but other than that, there's nothing really special about it. Imagine Next, we have the Imagination song from the Imagination Land trilogy. And this one is not really even a song. It's more just repeating the word imagination over and over again with different vocal inflections. It's actually really important to the plot because it's how they get to Imagination Land. It's pretty funny, especially because it goes on for far longer than it needs to, but musically, it's pretty much non-existent, so I think it deserves to be down here. Imagination! Imagination! Are you gonna take us somewhere or not? You wanted a free? You wanted a boyfriend? Next, we have Lisa Berger singing Work Slut, which is a parody of a Britney Spears song. It plays while the girls are learning to Photoshop pictures of themselves. It's kind of funny because it's saying, obviously, to work out while they're not working out at all. They're just Photoshopping pictures of themselves. They work out. Look at those thighs. Come on, you gotta push harder. The parody is very accurate. It does sound like an old Britney Spears song, so it is funny, but it's mostly just kind of annoying, especially with Lisa Berger's vocal delivery. I've always liked Shelly, but her voice has always been just a little bit annoying, and I know that's intentional, but in this case, it doesn't help. She says, oh my god. For the hook, she says the word turds many times, which is her favorite catchphrase, so it makes sense. Too many turds, I had my way. Other than that, it's pretty musically average. It's not particularly funny, but it is somewhat catchy, so it's not bad. I'm a A Witch Pursuit thing is one that I also didn't have any memory of. The overall theme of this episode is that the dads have a yearly witch celebration where they dress as witches and party, but one of them became an actual witch and started hunting children. The dads keep pointing out that it's just one bad witch and that just because they're witches doesn't make them bad too. There's good witches and there's bad witches. One of the main jokes is that they don't want a literal witch hunt, but they don't know the actual term, so they just keep saying a witch pursuit thing. Just be sure it doesn't turn into a witch pursuit thing. The song itself is a chorus of all of the dads singing together. It's pretty bland lyrically and musically. It really just exists so that they can make the joke once again. It made me snicker, but again, it's nothing special. Super Fun Time is sung by Cartman when him and Butters escape from the Pioneer Village. It's catchy, it's musically fun, and it's upbeat. It's nothing particularly funny about it, it's just a backing track for the montage of them having a super fun time. So it- oh my- <clears throat> Any track with Cartman as the lead singer is always going to be kind of good, but for this one, that's really all it has going for it. Faith in Christ comes from the episode where Butters and Father Maxie become friends. Again, it's another montage song. It plays during their montage of them doing all these fun activities. It's not really funny. The only lyrics are Faith in Christ over and over again, but it has a shockingly good instrumental for a pretty throwaway montage song. Like, it has a pretty great guitar solo and everything. The music is really solid. But it's literally just faith in Christ, so there's nothing like funny about it. Faith in Christ. Sanctum Peter Cotium, Deus Hippitus Hoppitus is a parody of the Catholic hymns that they sing during Mass. In the episode, they're essentially in an Easter Bunny secret society, so it makes sense in that context. It uses what I assume is Latin, and that makes it pretty funny. 
And even though it leans pretty heavily on that context for it to be funny, I can tell you as someone that grew up in the Catholic Church that the music is pretty spot on for what they were going for, so I find it pretty entertaining. If it is, hop it is, they use Remember, I love cheesy poofs. The Cheesy Poofs theme song is arguably one of the most iconic songs from the show, and I feel kind of bad for putting it this low. It is incredibly catchy, and hearing Cartman at the end of it makes it very funny, but it's just too short for me to feel comfortable placing it any higher. It's not really a fully fledged song. We'd be Lame. I don't know what to do, Rebecca. I didn't really remember this one either. It comes from Hooked on Monkey Phonics when Kyle sings it outside of Rebecca's window as a romantic gesture. What do you say we get together? You really are quite good looking, Rebecca. One thing about Kyle's voice in the early seasons is that it was always strangely satisfying when he was singing. It really made everything feel just a little bit more wholesome. So it succeeds in that regard because it's pretty cute to watch Kyle sing this song. I would say it's not really funny at all, but it's not really meant to be either. It's just cute and wholesome and it's pretty enjoyable. We move from one wholesome love song to the next when Larry sings Shelly, Shelly. Larry begins to fall in love with Shelly throughout this episode as Shelly compelled him to stand up to his parents coddling and be himself. So he writes a song for her about coming out of his shell and he uses wordplay with her name, you know, Shell and Shelly. It's very wholesome to see him come out of his shell and his nasally voice makes it even more charming. And you make the world a nicer place. Shelly, so this led to him and Shelly living happily ever after and nothing bad happening later in the episode to ruin it. Yes, that is what happened. Stinky bitches, you got those stinky bitches. Stinky Britches is the first on this list of Chef's many legendary songs. It was stolen by a label and sung by Alanis Morissette in the episode. It has a good groove, as do all Chef songs. The lyrics are questionable to say the least, but it's really just a fun Chef song. So Future Self and Me is an upbeat sitcom parody. It's used for a montage of Stan having tons of fun with his future self. There's nothing special musically, but it is pretty funny, especially with Stan being fed up with the entire situation and responding in real time to the song. I always found it funny when Trey does his parody upbeat positive voice, and he does it pretty often, as we'll see. All around, this one's just average musically, but it is pretty funny. Our first song of the many Canadian songs comes from the French Canadians in No Place Like French. The French accents are pretty satisfying in this song, it is very catchy, I just wish it was a more fully fledged song. In total there's probably like 20 seconds of song with the rest just being dialogue in between. It's funny because they act like French Canada is so different from everywhere else in Canada, but it's all just Canada. It is incredibly promising, catchy, and funny. If it was a full song, I could see it being much higher on the list, but it's just too short, unfortunately. Locked Up In Here comes from an episode I'm not a big fan of. It comes from Hummels and Heroin. They go for your classic prison rap style, comparing a nursing home to prison. It's very funny to see the juxtaposition of gangster rap in a nursing home. It honestly goes pretty hard, but it's weirdly un-South Park-like. Like, it doesn't really feel like a South Park song. I know that doesn't really make sense, but if you've listened to as much South Park music as I have, you'd get it. I think they do this style better better in Vote or Die, which will be coming up later in the video. So even though I like it, it still feels a little out of place in a South Park episode. Wait a minute, is that Kendrick? Hand in hand, we can live together, ginger or not, we're all the same, black or white. When Cartman realizes that he isn't actually ginger, he sings this song to bring people of all races together and to stop discrimination. The lyrics are intentionally lazy to emphasize how he's basically just freestyling it on the spot. Hey, 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 
It's very funny in the context since he goes from attempting a genocide of all non-gingers to singing it in the span of about 15 seconds, but on its own, it's just okay. If there are two things that Stan is good at in South Park, it's performance activism and singing a catchy tune. This song does both. He wrote it to get Kyle back from San Francisco. It's pretty funny because it parodies a lot of the music that tries to push messages despite having nothing to say about those messages because there is literally no substance to what he's saying. He's literally just repeating that people need to drive hybrids. It's surprisingly catchy and all around, it's pretty solid. Come on, everybody, be people now. Jewelry Polka is probably the most unique out of any of the South Park songs. It uses what I think would be considered scat singing, aka just wordless sounds, to create a surprisingly catchy tune. It plays during a montage showing how TV jewelers get their cheap jewelry through what is essentially drop shipping, and the song slowly gets louder and more aggressive as it continues, progressively adding new sounds until it sounds more like random grunting than anything else. It's not really funny at all, but it's pretty impressive considering the entire thing seems to be done a cappella. It's also used during several scenes in their video game, The Fractured But Whole. We are all One of the main gags in the post-COVID specials is that everyone keeps reminding you that it's the future, and this song plays on that by repeating it over and over again. They don't sell posadas anymore. I talk about Welcome to the future. It includes vaguely futuristic music in the background. It's another one that's pretty funny in the context, but on its own it's mostly just average, but it is pretty catchy. Canada on Strike is a fun, musical-esque song when Canada goes on strike. There are some funny moments, like when they talk about the time they spent rehearsing the song. All around, it's just decent. It's not especially funny or catchy, but it's really just a fun song that sounds like it could have fit in any generic musical. With a hidey lighty lighty and a hidey lighty lay, we work and we make cigarettes all hidey lighty day. So when the boys visit a cigarette factory with Rob Reiner, they encounter the workers singing this whimsical song. It's clearly a parody of Hi Ho from the Seven Dwarfs, and it's pretty hilarious to have Big Tobacco singing what is essentially a Disney song. Also has some pretty hilarious lyrics from the workers themselves. And, and if it gives me cancer when I'm 80, I don't care who the hell wants to be 90 anyway. So it's also pretty catchy, but it mostly shines in its comedy. Lives and relaxy with the cigarettes we make all day and night. Bike Parade plays during the Bike Parade after Tegrity saves the day against Amazon. It's sort of an evolution of the Colorado Farm song that plays when Randy first moved to Tegrity Farms, which is why that song won't be included on this list. I always liked when South Park did country music parodies, and considering how relentless they were with the Tegrity Farms during this era, it really sets the tone pretty well. But at least we ain't sucking no Bezosian dicks. One, two, three, four! Okay, I know everyone is going to be really pissed off about this one, but just hear me out. This is one of the most legendary songs from the show. Timmy ends up as the lead singer of a heavy metal band, and this is their hit single. This is a fully fledged heavy metal song. It has a really solid instrumental and backup vocals. The only thing that's holding this song back is, unfortunately, Timmy. I know that's kind of the whole point of his character, is that he only says his name, but looking at this song outside of the episode it's from, it would have been better if they had some lyrics that were comedic. If they did, this song easily could have been one of the best. It's a great song on its own, there's just nothing particularly funny about it, and the quality of the music doesn't hold as much weight as the comedy in my eyes. 
I know this is a fan favorite, so much so that it was even included as a DLC in the first Rock Band game. And remember, I'm not saying it's bad, I still really enjoy this song, just not as much as the ones that are above it. What makes a man? Is it the power in his hands? I couldn't decide if I wanted to count this one as a South Park song since technically it's not from South Park. It's actually from the movie Orgasmo, which is one of Matt and Trey's movies that was released shortly after South Park aired in 1997. It was fully released under the band name DVDA, which you can google what that stands for if you wish, but it's Matt and Trey's comedy band. I only counted it because it technically plays in an episode of South Park. It plays during the credits of Big Gay Al's Big Gay Boat Ride from season 1. It parodies sports movie rock soundtrack songs, clearly drawing inspiration from songs like Eye of the Tiger. Live it, live it. it nails the parody, constantly repeating how you're a man over and over again. It has solid music and vocals, and I think it's a good one to cap off the CT. Alright, so we've made it to the B tier, and this is where we start getting into the real stuff. Most of these songs are comedically and musically strong, but not quite the best of the best. They're just good songs all around. I've Got a Ring on My Finger parodies the Jonas Brothers and the purity rings that they used to wear. Basically, the song is saying that Disney uses these purity rings to pretend like they're not advertising sex to kids when that's really what they are doing. This song is hilarious, especially the little catchphrases that the Jonas Brothers have. Bye bye. The music itself is also spot on. You hear that guitar riff and it sounds exactly like a Jonas Brothers song or really any of those Disney musicians from the time. They really nail it and all around it's a hilarious song. We move from one parody of Disney music to the next with You Gotta Do What You Wanna Do. This song parodies High School Musical. Again, they absolutely nail the parody, it sounds exactly like a song that could have been in one of the High School Musical movies. It's not particularly funny, but Cartman does have some funny lines in it. The humor in it really comes from the accuracy of the parody. The Princess Kenny theme is the first of a couple of anime theme parodies. This one plays when Kenny decides to become a Japanese princess in the Black Friday trilogy. It is incredibly catchy, there's no English except for the words Princess Kenny, but to me it's just hilarious to see them write an entire anime princess theme song just for Kenny, so yeah, it's a fun song. When the boys need a new member for their boy band, Wendy decides to give it a try and auditions with this song. The song itself has lyrics that keep seeming like she's gonna say something explicit, but it quickly transitions into a different sentence. It's a pretty funny gag, and I think I have some nostalgia attached to this one because I remember my mom singing a song that did the same thing when I was a kid, and I thought it was the funniest thing ever. Although I'm not 100% sure if that was my mom, so if it wasn't, uh, sorry mom. Cafeteria Friche is Randy's theme song when he decides he wants to become a celebrity chef. This one really nails the sound of an intro song for one of these shows. The comedy really comes from Randy adding his own ad-libs in the middle of the song, really bringing the sexual tension enough to make everyone feel very uncomfortable. Oh yeah, man. Actually, sometimes a man doesn't love a woman, but he acts like he does in order to get some action. <laughs> Waiting on a Woman is another legendary chef song, and in my opinion, this one is arguably his funniest. It starts as a normal chef lovemaking song, but he quickly leaves the fantasy behind in favor of a much more realistic description of the events. Hold on a second, I gotta go to the bathroom. Wait and you wait. And you wait, and you wait, and you wait. It always makes me laugh when Chef just starts explaining the situation. He's barely even singing at this point. 
And while it's not his best musically, for me, it is no doubt his funniest. You wait and you're cooling down and she's still going to the bathroom. Some people say that I'm a bad guy. They may be right. They may be right. I Can Change is the first song from Bigger, Longer, and Uncut, and it's the lowest ranking, but it's still a solid song. With Saddam Hussein as the lead, he explains to Satan how this time he's changing for good. It goes for the Arabian Nights type of sound from Aladdin, and of course it nails that. It's really funny to hear Saddam proclaim that he's going to change for real, despite not giving any evidence that this is the case, and even though it's the weakest from Bigger, Longer, and Uncut, it is still a pretty hilarious song. It's not my fault that I'm so evil, it's society, society. There's a place that is magical and full of rain. Remember how I said that I love Trey Parker's fake, upbeat, positive voice? Yeah, well this is another classic example of that. This song is split into two parts, first at the beginning of the episode in which they proclaim the importance of saving the rainforest, and then later, after actually experiencing the rainforest and coming to hate it, the reprise at the end of the episode declares how much the rainforest sucks and how they need to destroy it all. There's a place called the rainforest that truly sucks ass. Let's knock it all down and get rid of it fast. You say I haven't even mentioned the title, which is the main refrain in the song, and... Uh, yeah, I mean, I don't even know what to say about that. Getting gay with kids is here. So All around, this is a very funny song and a very catchy tune. You only fight these causes cause caring cells. All you activists can go fuck yourselves. Would you like a blood job? Yes, I would like a blood job. Nothing. In Broadway Bro Down, Randy creates his own musical after discovering the incredible phenomenon that musicals make women want to give BJs. Randy is a lot less subtle about it in his musical, and we see that most clearly in Put That Heart to Work. Musically, it's just a generic Broadway-esque song, but some of the lines in it are absolutely hilarious with just how on the nose they are. A blood job isn't with your mouth. It's with your heart. Now get on your knees and put that heart to work. It's hard to be a Jew on Christmas. A Lonely Jew on Christmas is another classic Kyle song. He sings about the loneliness that comes with being Jewish on Christmas. It has some funny lines comparing Hanukkah and Christmas. Or leave water out for Rudolph cause there's something wrong with me. But again, Kyle's voice in the early seasons is just weirdly soothing and wholesome, making this song feel even more heartfelt despite the absurd topic. A lonely Jew on Christmas. Feeling good on a Wednesday. We reach our next song from Bigger, Longer, and Uncut, and this one comes when Kenny is sent to hell. It starts off sweet and whimsical as it seems like Kenny is going to heaven, only to switch to a heavy metal track as he is thrown into the fiery depths. It has heavy guitars and drums, as well as some great metal vocals. It really sounds like a Metallica song that might have been cut from one of their albums, which is actually no coincidence because James Hetfield of Metallica actually did the vocals of this song, but asked not to be credited. Being the most recent original song from South Park, Worldwide Privacy Tour comes from episode 2 of season 26. It's sung by the Prince of Canada and his wife as they travel around the globe proclaiming their need for privacy. It shares a lot of similarities with the Beatles' Magical Mystery Tour, which of course is not a coincidence, that was intentional. It's a catchy song and it has some fun music to it, but there's not really any lines other than Worldwide Privacy Tour, but for me the idea of a worldwide tour for privacy is funny enough to carry it this high. Taco Flavored Kisses is another absolutely legendary song. It's sung by Jennifer Lopez, more specifically the J-Lo in Cartman's Hand, who's actually Mitch Connor. It, it's a whole thing, don't worry about it. But because the song was actually written by Cartman, it's no surprise that it almost solely consists of racist stereotypes. J-Lo sings about her love of tacos and burritos for basically the entire song. Tacos, ooh, tacos so good in my 
And this is one of those South Park songs that is so dumb you can't help but love it. See People in Me is another montage song. It plays while we watch Cartman's fantasy of living amongst the sea people that he's buying. It includes lyrics about Cartman's hatred of living in South Park and his friends. It's really just a funny song and a great backing track. Why can't I be like all the other kids? As far as I know, Why Can't I Be Like All the Other Kids is the only song from Token in the show. His voice is very similar to what I was talking about with early Kyle, it's just weirdly wholesome and endearing. The comedy in this song, and really the episode as a whole, comes from him singing about how he's so different from all the other kids, but it's not for the typical reason of being poor, but instead it's because he's too rich. It's not my fault my parents succeed so much. It has some funny lines comparing what he has with the other boys, and the idea of being upset that you're too rich is pretty hilarious on its own. Please God, send more rich kids to my town. Russell Crowe's theme song for his show Fightin' Round the World is incredibly catchy. It discusses his short temper and his love for fighting while remaining one of the catchiest songs in the show. I will still catch myself singing this song every now and then, it's just such an earworm. It's not especially funny on its own, but the fact that it gets stuck in my head as often as it does is enough to make me place it this high. Round the world. Who lives in the east neath the willow tree? Sexual harassment, panda. There are only a few South Park songs I would say are catchier than Fightin' Around the World, and Sexual Harassment Panda is one of them. I don't know what it is, but this song is stuck in my head constantly. It's essentially only one line, Sexual Harassment Panda, but for some reason, the way it's sung is just infectious. Speaking of infectious, have you watched my video about zombie parasites? It's a really good video, and you should- This is another South Park song that's just so dumb that it's hilarious. Like, the idea of having a mascot to warn about something as serious as sexual harassment is just so ridiculous, and it really makes the song for me. Sexual harassment, panda. You know, Jesus, I've been thinking a lot about you lately. When Cartman starts Faith Plus One, which is his Christian rock band, his method in songwriting is to take the lyrics from generic love songs and replace the names with Jesus. At Christ Fest, the Christian music festival, they perform Jesus Baby, and it sounds exactly like how you'd expect it to, with a typical love song backing track and some rather questionable lyrics. You're trembling, Jesus, it's hilarious to hear Cartman sing about his love for Jesus, but it's as if he was actually his lover. Take good care of your baby. Call you my baby, baby. And the episode contains a bunch of these love song parodies, which makes sense when you learn that Matt and Trey actually wrote a bunch of these songs, planning to release it as an album and pretending that they were a serious Christian rock band which is honestly the most Matt and Trey thing ever. And as you'll see, this isn't the last time we'll hear from Faith Plus One on this list. Up to you to save me, Jesus, baby. Vote or die, motherfucker, motherfucker, vote or die. Right when Stan doesn't want to vote, P. Diddy comes around with his track Vote or Die to remind him of the consequences of not voting. The title of the track is quite literal, as Diddy raps about literally murdering you if you don't vote. Get out there and vote or I will motherfucking kill you. It gets even funnier when he starts including the typical topics you would expect from a gangster rap song, but he somehow manages to still make it about voting. I like it when you vote, bitch. Shake them titties when you vote, bitch. This one is an absolute classic, and it's probably the best original South Park rap song. Vote or die. Vote or die. Tonight is right for love. You know I love gravy is another classic chef song. In this one, chef sings in a sultry voice about how the mood is right, using a euphemism that will make you never want to eat the gravy from Cracker Barrel ever again. Love gravy. But undoubtedly, the best part of the song is when Elton John features, aka Trey doing an Elton John impression, and it was spot on. Chef's songs always have a great groove in vocals, and this one is no different. 
And with the use of the title phrase and Elton John, it adds a ton of comedic value and pushes this one up the list. Love The Chinpokomon theme song is another one that is incredibly catchy, and that really adds to the humor of it since it parodies the relentless marketing towards children you see with crazes like Pokemon, with the lyrics of the song literally just repeating how you have to buy Chinpokomon. The absolute absurdity of brainwashing children to buy your product is something that we only see more of nowadays in many forms. Even though it's short, it's super catchy and it always makes me laugh. His name is James Cameron, the bravest pioneer. If there's one thing we're learning from this list, it's that Matt and Trey know how to write a catchy song. This is another of the few songs I think are catchier than Fighting Around the World. Not only is it catchy, but it plays on the idea that James Cameron may be a little bit self-obsessed as he plays the song for himself while he descends to the bottom of the ocean in Raising the Bar. I mean, I don't even blame him because the song is super funny and it's guaranteed to get stuck in your head. No budget too steep, no seat too deep. Who's it's him, James In this song, Jimmy does his best Elvis impersonation while at summer camp. It includes some quality instrumentals with a ukulele and some great backing vocals from Timmy and the other disabled kids. Jimmy also has a surprisingly pleasant singing voice, and the overtly offensive name of the camp just adds to the humor, in my opinion. Where has my country gone? Where has my country gone? Does anyone else remember Garrison as a presidential candidate when it was still funny before it all went way downhill? Where Has My Country Gone is a glimpse into that reality, as Garrison sings about the state of the country. His patriotism is mixed with just a hint of racism, and as the song progresses, he gradually gets more and more overt with his offensive statements. It includes some hilarious lines alongside great vocals from Garrison, and the song does a great job of embodying Garrison's personality at this point in the series. It took 43 presidents to make us stand tall. And just one black guy to unravel it all. We know, 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 we know. Where to start with this one? The Black Friday trilogy parodies Game of Thrones to a T, and one thing they really nail is George R. R. Martin's seeming obsession with the male genitalia. Every time he starts talking about the plot of his show, he seems to get a little sidetracked and goes on a tangent about wieners. Naturally, it gets to the point where he is conducting a full chorus who recreate the Game of Thrones theme song by repeating Wiener over and over again. There's not really much to say about this one, it's just South Park taking a joke to the extreme, and it makes for a pretty hilarious song. Another day inside, don't have to do a thing. I love you social distancing. I love you social distancing is Cartman in his purest form. He sings about how much he loves all of the COVID restrictions, doing anything he wants all day every day, and not having to interact with anyone else. It has some especially funny parts, like when he cuts his mom off to remind her of the rules. It's fun and upbeat, and it does a great job at reminding us of how much of a narcissist Cartman really is. You know, making a song about committing genocide with the Dark Lord sound upbeat and whimsical is not an easy task, but with this one, they pulled it off. This song plays when Cartman gains the respect of Cthulhu and they ride off into the sunset to commit incomprehensibly heinous acts. The song is basically a direct parody of the song from My Neighbor Totoro, and it's done to hilarious effect. The dark lyrics contrasting with the music makes for one of the best moments from the Coon and Friends trilogy, and a great song in its own right. Together you will have so much fun.
I heard there is no Christmas in the silly Middle East. If you thought Mr. Garrison's last song was offensive, strap in. In this song, Garrison describes traveling the world to bring Christmas spirit to other cultures. He does so in a manner that could at best be described as tasteless, telling practitioners of other religions that they are wrong and calling them some rather offensive names. Put down that book, the Koran, and hear some holiday wishes. Again, this song is just so Mr. Garrison, he never ceases to amaze me with just how terrible he can be, and this song shows that well. Alongside a good melody, it makes for a great song to cap off the B tier. Hey there, Mr. Hinduist, Merry f***ing Christmas! Okay, so now we're at the A tier, and this is where we get to the true classics. From here on out, every single song is great. Peter, have you heard about my robot friend? He's robot friend comes from one of the best episodes in the show in Awesome-O. It's another montage song, and it's sung by Butters while he has a great time with his robot friend, who's actually Cartman in a suit. It has super sweet lyrics, and it's very wholesome. Butters has a great singing voice, and in my opinion, it's one of the best sitcom-style parodies. My robot friend. I'm telling you, chum. Now get yourself ready for some boogers and come. We move from wholesome and sweet to absolutely disgusting and rancid with the Yelper special. When everyone gets fed up with Yelper viewers in town, they devise this solution. The lyrics to the song are absolutely revolting, detailing what is being done to the food of these Yelpers. It's classic South Park gross out humor, surprisingly creative with the ways that they can ruin someone's food. The music and vocals are almost Frank Sinatra-esque, and they not only sound great, but they add to the humor since this sort of music is generally thought of as distinguished and elegant, while the lyrics of it are anything but. And just an absolute Christmas classic. If you weren't listening to the lyrics, you may not even be able to tell that it's not one of the real classics. The lyrics are hilariously gross, describing the different forms of Mr. Hankey and how you can get him to visit on Christmas. Sometimes he's nutty, sometimes he's corny, he can be brown or greenish brown. Mr. Hankey himself features in the song, and even though you would expect his voice to be annoying in song form, he works surprisingly well. Hot Lava is one of Chef's funkiest songs. It has an incredible vocal performance from Isaac Hayes, as is expected, and the funky instrumental really makes it a great song. The episode is all about a volcano erupting in South Park, so his comparison of Hot Lava to his lovemaking is just hilarious. There was a boy I used to know with We Miss You Randy is Randy's epic comeback song from the Streaming Wars special, and it hits super hard. Context is pretty important for this one since we all know how hated Randy's Tegrity Farms arc was by fans. The song is incredibly self-aware from Matt and Trey. Many of the lyrics are very self-referential, discussing how Randy had lost himself over time, and this is the return of the old Randy. It's like you just became a one no overwrapped part of the show. It has some very funny meta lines, and the actual music is very electronic and poppy. It even includes some bizarre vocal effects, but I think they really add to the charm. We missed you, where have you been? I've been like a fool. This was a hilarious way to declare the return of the old Randy, and the music is pretty great too. We've all been waiting for this day to come. We're all so happy about the things you've done. Choo trains land down its tracks with a choo all the way and back. We go to another absolute classic from Mr. Hankey, and without a doubt, my favorite of his Christmas tracks. This might be an unpopular opinion, but I think that Poo Choo Train is incredibly underrated. It's very short, but in the time that it plays, we get to hear Mr. Hankey and Cartman sing a duet about riding on a train made of poop. The train whistle also gets in, adding some ad-libs of its own. Both of their voices are very pleasant in this track, and it's hilarious to hear Cartman sing so passionately like he's in a Christmas movie. Poo Poo Train is my favorite thing, spreading Christmas joy as we ride and sing. Especially knowing his selfish intentions in that episode. Christmas time! 
time wouldn't be the same without hugs and kisses and a poo-choo train. Rising to the top, push it to the edge, give it all you got, barely break a sweat, strong boy! We get this track during a montage of the Strong Woman competition. It's another sports montage style song, but the encouraging lyrics and inspirational delivery of the vocals makes it absolutely hilarious, especially since Strong Woman doesn't actually win the event. The instrumental is also great. It has some soaring guitars and backing vocals that really bring it all together. Don't look now, but you just won! Bullying isn't cool. Bullying is lame. This song is just absolutely hilarious. It's all about Stan discouraging bullying because he's an activist and of course not for any personal reasons. His rather unique solution to bullying is to, well, bully it. Throughout the song, he describes committing cliche bully actions to bullying itself to end it for good. I don't know why I find the idea of bullying bullying to be so funny, but the music itself is also very catchy and fun. Not to mention Cartman's brief cameo as a female pop star and the bridge from Butters that gets cut off as the icing on the cake. Maybe we should go away. Put cares aside for just a day. The Ballad of Tweak and Craig is one of the most bizarre songs in the show. It's a touching love song about the unity of Tweak and Craig. It's sung by a man with a very strong Japanese accent since the episode is all about yaoi. Somehow it ends up being simultaneously beautiful and hilarious, especially when the singer gets distracted by his stereotypical Japanese morals. We must hold Tweak and Craig with the highest honor! Gambaro! All around, it's just a great song. But a prostitute is someone who would love you no matter who you are, what you look like. Once again, Chef keeps it real in this song when he explains to the children what a prostitute is. The music is catchy as always, but it's nothing particularly special. This one is just really funny. He has some hilarious lines about the role of a prostitute. No, you don't pay for her to stay, you pay her to leave afterward. And the random cameo from James Taylor, aka Trey doing a James Taylor impersonation, is just so ridiculous. A prostitute is like any other woman, they all trade something for sex, and they do it well. String up the lights and light up the tree We're gonna make some revelry You know, you wouldn't really expect hell to be the most festive when it comes to Christmas But as Satan shows in this song, you'd be sorely mistaken Just the idea of a Christmas carol from Satan is funny enough But it really shines through all of the celebrity cameos and references being made Even Mount Saint Tung is under the spell It's Christmas time in hell It has some great lines about how different Christmas is in hell It's really super funny and great musically it flows well, and when the chorus joins for the backing vocals, it makes it even better. Team up for just one day, all is well, it's Christmas time in hell. Unfulfilled. I didn't actually remember this song at all. Seasons 20 through 23 are all kind of like a blur to me, but when I listened to it, I was shocked by the vocal quality from Trey Parker. Like, we already knew that he was at least a decent singer, but he really channeled his inner Sinatra for this one. The song feels surprisingly hopeless and haunting, with a light jazz instrumental behind it. And while the music is very high quality, it's also funny considering the song is about not getting your Amazon deliveries on time, and it has a few lines in it that catch you off guard because of how unnecessarily vulgar they are. The happiness I knew just got ripped and killed. This one really surprised me and I ended up enjoying it a lot. This is probably one of the most commonly reused songs in the show. We see Butter singing this tune all the time while he plays by himself, and it really shines in how it emphasizes Butter's innocence, especially since it has some rather naughty themes that he seems to be completely unaware of. When Cartman becomes a suicide activist, he does what all great activists do and writes a song about it. It's an obvious parody of Logic's 1-800 song, and I would say it's almost too accurate. It always makes me laugh when the backing vocals come in to sing the chorus. 
The lyrics are painfully on the nose, and it's made even funnier when he sings about some very specific plans. It's hilarious and absurd, and along with the melody and chorus, it makes for a great song. Eric, please don't die. I'm gonna make, make it red. I'm gonna take a little time and set things straight. From one disingenuous Cartman song to the next, Make It Right sees Cartman going around and repenting to all the people that he has wronged in the past. It's hilarious to think that Cartman truly believes that delivering some gift baskets to all the people he's done horrible things to in the past is enough to atone for his sins, and the positive gospel style music makes for a wonderful track. I've got something in my front pocket for you. Another Butter song that he definitely doesn't understand the meaning of, I Got Something in My Front Pocket is the song that he tap dances to at the national championships. I really don't even know how to describe this song musically, it sounds like it's from like the 1920s, but I weirdly enjoy the voice that Trey puts on while singing this despite how bizarre it is. The lyrics are rather suggestive, and the fact that it's the song that Butters chose to tap dance to is just too good. Give a little squeeze and say how do you one thing I know, my girl ain't no hobbit. She might be stumpy, that don't mean she a hobbit. Considering it's a parody of a Kanye track, we already know it's gonna be a masterpiece. Specifically, it parodies Bound 2, and as usual, it nails the parody. Throughout this episode, the running gag is that Kanye keeps trying to defend Kim from the Hobbit allegations, but slowly comes to the realization that she is, in fact, a literal hobbit. This song just continues that joke, but I find that joke incredibly funny, and it's even funnier in song form. While she drinking her grog and singing those merry songs at night. I like to imagine that Kanye would actually release a song like this where he has a life altering realization midway through recording, but he leaves it in anyways. Please God tell me I'm not engaged to no habit. There are times when you get suckered in by drugs and alcohol and sex with women. This is actually the only song from Mr. Mackey on the list. Yeah, I know we had the Bells one, but that was a cover and not really an original at all, so yeah. It's from Bigger, Longer, and Uncut, and he teaches the kids some fun substitutes for swearing in song form. Step one, set of assay buns, like kiss my buns or your buns whole. The replacements he comes up with are funny enough, but the funniest parts of the song are when he explains what their lives could become if they continue to swear. It's also just awesome to hear him implement his favorite word in a meaningful way throughout the song. All around, the song is just super catchy and fun, and I always have a great time listening. The Faith Plus One medley takes everything that was great about Jesus Baby and takes it up to 11. It's formatted as an infomercial, including a ton of different songs. These songs are far less subtle in their love for Jesus, taking it to some hilariously explicit places. Even the titles of the songs are funny on their own. It's not special musically, but it is just so incredibly funny. You know, I don't think I really even have to say anything about Somalian Pirates We. It's Cartman singing about how he's a Somalian pirate. I mean, what else is there to say? We'll take your boat, set your ass afloat. Somalian Pirate We. I'm a little bit country. Well, I'm a little bit rock and roll. This is another song that I feel like is always underrated. Like, I never see anyone talking about this song, but I think it's awesome. It plays on the rock versus country trope while simultaneously declaring each side as anti war and pro war, respectively. If it means war, then we say no! It's split into two parts like the Rainforest one, early in the episode establishing the differences in the views of the groups, and at the end of the episode allowing them to find a common ground and unite country and rock and roll. Be the muscle of America, and me I'll be the caring soul. The lyrics regarding America's role in the war are hilarious and very accurate, and the battle between the music styles makes for an incredibly entertaining experience. And we're a little bit rock and roll. 
I'm gonna make love to you, woman. Gonna I'm gonna make love to you, woman is the quintessential chef song. It was the first one we ever heard him sing, and from that point on, we all knew what chef was all about. It is his most iconic song, and it really embodies everything that we love about chef. His smooth, sultry voice, his funky rhythms, and his tendency to get caught up in a song and forget he's singing to third graders. This song is probably the first thing you think of when you think of chef, and for me, it's the foundation of his legacy on the show. We're making love, baby, yeah. love, baby, love, 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 baby. Yeah. Love, love. Huh? Thing, thing. Another absolutely legendary track, Finger Bang is the one and only song from the kids' boy band that shares the same name. It is a spot-on parody of boy bands in that era, especially with the overtly sexual euphemisms. It's a spot-on parody with hilarious lyrics, and they even had a reunion 19 years later in season 23. When Butters takes role-playing a little too seriously, he ends up as a Mexican who is forced to work in order to get back home, singing this song while he works. The lyrics are all about the hard work a Mexican man like Butters puts in every day to make a living, and his sweet and clearly not Mexican voice make me laugh every time. The hook is also incredibly catchy. This is another one that will randomly pop into my head and I'll be singing it all day. When I first heard it, I thought for sure that it was a cover of an existing song because it's just so accurate to those old working songs. And when I found out it was original, my love for it increased even more. Say everybody have you seen my balls, they're big and salty and brown. I know I was really hyping up the last Chef song, saying that it was his legacy and all that, and I do think that's true, but with that being said, I still think I prefer Chocolate Salty Balls. It's the only song that is even close to how iconic Make Love To Your Woman is, and it's probably one of his best sounding songs. Again, a super fun and funky beat and great vocals. But of course, what everyone loves about this song is Chef's delicious dessert that he wants to make sure everyone tries. This one is a definite fan favorite, and this was proven when the song was released as a full single, and it reached number one on the UK singles chart. Not the comedy chart, the chart that includes all music. That means for a week, Chocolate Salty Balls was the most popular song in the UK over even the Spice Girls. This song is literally one of the biggest songs in Isaac Hayes' entire musical career, and I kind of love it for that. If you ever need a quick, pick me up, just stick my balls in your mouth. I'm super, thanks for asking. If you haven't seen Bigger, Longer, and Uncut, you probably didn't expect Big Gay Al to show up on this list, but he's here for a reason. He sings I'm Super during the USO show, and it is a certified banger. It feels incredibly theatrical, like a grand musical performance. Al's flamboyant personality and unrelenting positivity shines through in a fantastic way, creating one of the most fun songs from the entire show. It's also just incredibly well arranged with the way that he subverts expectations throughout the song. Before it crescendos into what we were all waiting for. It's silly, catchy, and incredibly well done, and it makes for a super fun song. Again, again. Joseph Smith was called a prophet. Dum 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 dum. The song that plays while we learn the story of the founder of Mormonism is deceptively simple. The genius in the song is how it tells the story so effectively and subtly reveals its true message over time. When you first listen, you probably think that the dum dum dums is just a nonsensical phrase for the melody, but as the song continues to explain the story of Joseph Smith, they start injecting the dum dum dums with very specific timing until they eventually just flat out reveal the message. In America, really? That sounds kind of dum 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 dum. That's 
I remember watching this for the first time and being so shocked when I finally realized that the song was calling the story dumb, I burst out laughing because it caught me so off guard. Even though it's very simple, the simplicity makes it one of their funniest and catchiest songs. Lucy Harris, smart, 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 smart. A great adventure is waiting for you ahead. The Ballad of Lemmy Winks tells a tale of truly epic proportions. Parodying Lord of the Rings, the song tells the story of the adventures of Lemmy Winks as he tries to escape from Mr. Slave. It's so wrong and so gross, and that's what makes it so hilarious. The music is whimsical and mysterious, switching up depending on Lemmy Winks' situation. Lemmy Winks came to the dark. And the high-pitched nasally delivery of the vocals makes it a masterpiece. Now that you're the gerbil king, there's more ventures to go on. Fly away to faraway lands and to the setting sun. I'll admit, Put It Down is a song that I've been sleeping on. I didn't think it was anything special when I first heard it, but after a re-listen, I realized that I was doing it a massive disservice. The song warns of the dangers of being on your phone while being president, a clear jab at Trump who was known for his Twitter rampages. So it's funny, but the song also just sounds really good. It has good vocal harmonies and a backing track, and it is a full-fledged song. All of that would have been enough for maybe a high B tier, but what really sealed the deal for me was that suicide activist Cartman makes a surprise cameo to lay down one of the hardest verses of all time. Give a standing ovation for suicide in our nation, or I will rip my own guts out without one hesitation. Dedication like, unironically, Cartman absolutely snaps here, and that alone made this song shoot up the list. The opening and closing track of Bigger, Longer, and Uncut is absolutely perfect for its purpose. Mountain Town feels like the opening track for a coming-of-age musical or something, as Stan walks around the town declaring what a beautiful day it is in their mountain town. We see his interactions with several residents who also break out into song, with each one adding a few more adjectives to describe their mountain town. Thank God we live in this quiet redneck mountain town. The real genius in the song is that it has absolutely no swearing in it, giving all the clueless parents in the theater a false sense of security before following it up with the most vulgar song in South Park. The reprise at the end of the movie builds on several of the lines from the beginning, especially focusing on adding as many adjectives before Mountain Town as possible, adding a solid 15 seconds of words before the boys finally share a beautiful harmony to close it out. It really is the perfect intro and outro for the movie. Baby, you know you the girl for me. You probably thought we were done with chef songs with how I was talking about the last one. But no, Simultaneous is actually my favorite chef song. I know this is going to be a controversial opinion because I never see anyone talk about it, but in my opinion, this is chef's best song musically. This is a song I unironically will listen to in my day-to-day -day life, and the fact that it's also funny just adds to it. He sings about all he wants is his lover, before quickly adding a few asterisks to that. You and me and her. It's just hilarious to hear Chef singing about the potential for multiple partners, and with how good the music is, it's impossible for this one not to take the top spot in the A tier. And you and you, simultaneous loving, baby. So with that, we have officially made it to the S tier. These are the best of the best, absolute classics, some of the most iconic moments in South Park history. I have a little dreidel, I made it out of clay, and when it's dry and ready- Countless times in this video I've talked about how catchy some of these songs are, but for me, there is none catchier than Dreidel. I know that this one isn't fully original since the Dreidel song is an actual Hanukkah song, but the catchiness of the song is not the only thing that makes it special. Cartman's part in the song is very much classic Cartman ripping on Jews while partaking in a Hanukkah song. And as the song progresses, Stan and Kyle's parents join in as well, each singing their own melodies. They slowly add each melody throughout until by the end, everyone is singing their part at the same time, resulting in a beautiful polyphony. Well, 
yes, I did have to Google what that was called, and no, I don't know if I'm pronouncing it correctly. I'm an absolute sucker for this type of song. When they can weave together different melodies in a way that works, it always impresses me immensely, and in this case, it makes for a song so catchy that I'm singing it at least a couple times a week. It's super funny too, with Cartman ripping on Jews throughout and the reveal of Gerald's part being completely unrelated to the song, solidifying its spot in the S tier. Courtney Cox, I love you. You're so hot on that show. Dad? Who's the boy that can laugh in a storm cloud? Turn a frown into a smile for free. I mean, what can I even say about this one? We all know that Matt and Trey love their sitcom parody songs, but this is their peak in that genre. I really don't need to justify this one. You all know why it's here. Surprise when you find a little boy named Butters. Well, that's, that's me. Everyone likes me. Safe Space comes from the season 19 episode that shares a title, and it shares the Broadway musical style that many of these songs utilize. This style was a resounding success for this song, providing a magical journey through a fantasy world. And by that I mean the fantasy world of safe spaces. The lyrics in the song masterfully satirize the idea of safe spaces and the attitude of those who use them. You might call me a pussy, but I won't hear you in my safe space. It has quite a few lines that will make me laugh no matter how many times I hear it. People that support me, mixed in with more people that support me. But what really makes it a masterpiece is about halfway through when they personify reality as an evil villain and they are forced to fight him off through song. You can't ruin our lives, reality. Our safe space will keep you out. Rocks, we can't this song is just great all around. Anything. In case you haven't figured it out yet, I really like the music from South Park Bigger, Longer, and Uncut. I actually made an entire video about the movie about a year ago, but it got copyrighted and taken down, but I actually just re-uploaded it, so if you want to check it out, feel free to do so. Brian Boitano is a mythical creature in the South Park universe, and in this song, we get to learn just how legendary he was. The boys sing this song when they need to come up with a plan to save Terrence and Philip from their executions, so they think about what their hero would do in this situation. The lyrics tell a tale of Brian Boitano acting with divine power to save the world countless times throughout history, and they get more and more absurd throughout. The idea of an Olympic figure skater being so legendary to the boys is funny enough, but the musical aspects of the song are done incredibly well too. It's played like your cliche, let's go save the day song, and the vocals from the boys are great for this style. Brian Boitano may seem like a super random choice for this song, but what many of you may not know is that the boys had asked Brian Boitano for advice before. This whole song is actually a callback to the spirit of Christmas, the original South Park short that led to the show getting picked up by Comedy Central. Did someone say my name? Because of the incredible music, humor, and callback to their roots, this song will forever remind us of who to ask for advice when we're feeling lost. The Circle of Pooh has to be the most underrated song in South Park history. Honestly, I didn't even remember it before I started making this list, but once I re-listened to it, I was absolutely blown away. Mr. Hankey sings this song to his son to remind him of his importance in the life of all living things. It's a parody of the circle of life from Lion King, and it is so funny to me to take a song like that and make it about something as dumb as Poop's role in life. So it can spring to life and become food for the the music is incredible, absolutely nailing the grandiose feel that they were going for, and Mr. Hankey's vocals are great as always, and with all of that it probably would have ranked at a high A tier already, but what pushes it up to the S tier is when his son begins to understand his importance and breaks out into song himself, with this absolutely incredible performance from Lewis Price. I'm the pool of the antelope that flows onto the ground. That made me absolutely lose it the first time I watched it, and on top of that, the singing is amazing, making this one of my favorites from the whole show. I 
mean, what can I say about the theme song? It's the theme song. It is the most legendary song from the entire show, without a doubt. It's gone through a few changes throughout the years, including switching up the music itself and Kenny's muffled line, but it is truly timeless and I will never get tired of it. Come on down South Park and meet some friends of mine. When we all tuned into season 16's Butterballs for the first time, we had no expectations of a great South Park song. Then they played Make Bully and Kill Itself, and we were all blown away by how great of a song that was. And once we reached the end of the episode, our minds were absolutely blown when a running gag throughout the episode became one of South Park's greatest songs ever. San Diego. Jackin' It in San Diego is one of the funniest songs they've ever made. It's a reference to director Jason Russell, the guy who made Coney 2012, who was later found wandering around the streets of San Diego, well, jackin' it. The lyrics of the song are absolutely hilarious, suggesting the best locations and sightseeing for everyone's favorite activity in San Diego. The music and vocals are very barbershop quartet-esque, and the casual, fun nature of the song makes it truly incredible. I love this song so much, it is hysterical and incredibly well made, and I don't think I will ever get tired of it. If this whole YouTube thing doesn't end up working out, well, you all know where to find me. I'm gonna go out jacking it in San Diego. The day is approaching to give it your best and you've got to reach your prime. As we've seen, South Park has made a lot of montage songs, but Gotta Have a Montage is the montage song to end all montage songs. The whole song is about the function and importance of a montage in sports movies while functioning as the backing track for said montage. With every shot show a little improvement to show it what would take too long. The music is perfect for what they were going for with a very 80s synthwave style and vocal delivery. If you weren't listening to the lyrics, you wouldn't even realize it's not a classic montage song from a sports movie. From just a beginner to a pro, you need a montage. I just really, really love this song. It's just so funny to me. And obviously Matt and Trey thought it was pretty perfect too because they used it in their 2004 movie Team America World Police for a similar training montage. If you fade out, it seems like more time has passed in a montage. Blame Canada was nominated for Best Original Song at the Oscars, and that's for good reason. This song is South Park's best satirical song by far, with lyrics that poke fun at parents for their willingness to blame anything other than themselves for their children's behavior. So Sheila leads the town in blaming Canada for corrupting their children. It is absolutely genius satirically, along with one of the best instrumentals and vocals from a South Park song, with the incredibly talented Mary Kay Bergman singing in the voice of four different characters throughout the song. Rest in peace, Mary Kay, and thank you so much for being so important to one of my favorite shows. The chorus vocals backing her are also incredibly well done and fill out the song really nicely. Well, I think what really makes this song, and the entire movie for that matter, so great is how timeless it is. When it was created, Canada represented television, but it can be applied to anything. Whether it's movies, video games, or social media corrupting our youth, failing parents will always know exactly who should be blamed for it. You want to know something crazy? They didn't include this song in the Music Madness bracket. Sure, you can include Hippitus Hoppitus, but not Minorities at My Water Park. That's just absolute insanity, because this is one of Cartman's funniest songs. Cartman's racism is no secret, but this song really exemplifies just how far gone he is, as he complains about minorities in his water park. There are too many minorities, minorities at my water park. This is just Pete Cartman being grossly offensive to anyone that's not exactly like him, and some of the lines in this song are some of the funniest lines he's ever said. The lazy river has never been lazier. I've always thought that Cartman was at his best when he's at his worst, and this song is so outrageously offensive you can't help but appreciate his terribleness. The absolute defeat and passion in Cartman's voice just amplifies how serious he is about the minorities ruining his experience and the sheer absurdity of it all makes for an instant classic. I think I even saw Native American 
I've been so lonely, girl. I've been so sad and down. Couldn't understand why haters joked around. The gay fish joke has truly transcended South Park at this point. I've talked to so many people that have never even watched South Park but still know this joke, many of them even having heard this song. You could even argue that this joke has cemented itself as a part of Kanye's legacy forever, and I think that's beautiful. This song is clearly inspired by Heartless, and it is so spot on. The overuse of autotune, the instrumental, and the Kanye impression makes this sound like an actual Kanye song from the 808s era. The lyrics describe Kanye finally embracing his life as a gay fish, and it is so ridiculous that it's just amazing. There's actually an extended version of the song that they played at the 25th anniversary show, and it's even more absurd with some absolutely hilarious lines. Gay Fish is truly iconic, as much as Kanye wishes it wasn't, and even though he still to this day doesn't understand the fish sticks joke, we will always remember him for his love of male fish. Sometimes I think when I look up real high, you know, there's nothing I can say about Up There that would truly do it justice. I mean, they gave a Disney princess song to Satan. What else do you even need to know? Up there, there is so much room where babies burn and flowers bloom. If this list were ranked on musical quality alone, it would be tough not to give this the first spot. It's just absolutely beautiful, truly, with Satan giving an incredible vocal performance throughout. Combined with some truly remarkable choir vocals and great instrumental, it makes for a stunning piece of music that I have legitimately added to my playlist. Stay below, alone. Because of my beliefs, I'm supposed to and of course, it is absolutely hilarious too. Just the idea of Satan singing a song about his desire for a normal life up on Earth is funny enough, but my favorite moment is when the song reaches its climax and he hits this absolutely incredible note. If only I could write a book. This song is just amazing, and I love it so, so much. Alright, listen, I've been watching a lot of Naruto recently, so maybe I'm a bit biased, but Let's Fighting Love will always hold a special place in my heart. Musically, the guitar and heavy drums immediately make it feel like an anime theme song, but where they really nail it is in the vocals. Trey Parker sounds great as always, and him singing in Japanese is something I never knew I needed. The comedy of the song comes from just how accurate it is, as the Japanese is occasionally broken up by a few words in English. It's hilarious just how accurate these broken and nonsensical English phrases are, especially with Trey putting on a lispy Japanese accent that is just so spot on. If you're not familiar with anime, this one may not be all that great to you, but for me, it will always be one of my favorites. I'm getting pretty sick of him calling my mom. I bet all of you probably expected this one to take the first place. Well, I have one more that you may not remember, so stick around. When you think of this song, you probably immediately thought of the version from Bigger, Longer, and Uncut, as that version is the truly iconic one. What you may not know is that this song was actually in the show before the movie, in season one, but it's a lot slower and not nearly as well made, so I'm only talking about the one from the movie. I really don't even have that much to say about this song, it's just absolutely legendary. Cartman tears into Kyle's mom for the entirety of the song, insulting her in every way possible before finally breaking it down in an epic crescendo at the end. <laughs> He sounds great, it has great backing vocals, it's fast paced, it's catchy, it's hilarious, it's perfect. In a way, this song kind of is South Park. It embodies everything we love about the show and does so with flawless execution. But it's not the best. God has smiled upon you this day. I know this is going to be an unpopular opinion, but just allow me to explain myself. La Resistance is not the funniest song. 
The song parodies One Day More from Les Mis, which is already kind of funny on its own, and it's still super funny in several different moments. The lyrics from Gregory describing what might happen to them are absolutely brutal, Terrence and Philip are just as vulgar as ever, and the dads sing about how all they really care about is seeing the execution. But there are definitely songs below it that are funnier, and I really struggle to find the words as to why I love this song so much, so I'll try my best. For me, what makes La Resistance the best song in South Park is its ability to captivate me like none of the other songs in the show. Every aspect of this song is perfect. Musically, it is the best song and it's not even close. The vocals from Gregory as he leads the kids in their movement to save Terrence and Philip are phenomenal, which is no surprise since the singing was done by Broadway legend Howard McGillen. Then the rest of the kids join in for backing vocals, which makes it sound even better. As the song continues, they slowly begin to introduce previous songs from the movie, with each singer declaring how tomorrow night is the night when their plans will finally come to fruition. It becomes a medley, as Sheila, Satan, the dads, Terrence and Philip, and the boys all manage to sneak a part of their songs in as it continues to build. In the second verse from Gregory, they begin to weave in these melodies at the same time, similarly to how they do it in the Dreidel song. It continues to build until it finally reaches its climactic ending, at which point all of the characters are singing about tomorrow night simultaneously. The way that they're able to intertwine all of these different songs from the movie into one cohesive medley is just truly awe-inspiring, and it gives me a feeling that few other pieces of music can. It may be kind of cringe, but I mean it when I say that this song gives me goosebumps every time I hear it. This is unironically one of my favorite songs. Not favorite South Park songs or favorite comedy songs, I mean one of my favorite songs, period. To me, it's not just a song. It's an experience. It's epic. It's climactic. It's inspiring. It's glorious. It's beautiful. It's hilarious. And in my opinion, it is the greatest original South Park song ever. It is perfect. Okay, I know I said La Resistance was the best song, but let's be honest, we all know what the real best song is. <laughs>